Hey guys, welcome back to the channel, and today we're talking about yet another lens. This is the new Great Joy 50mm T2.9, and in this video, I'm going to talk about the things I loved about this lens and the things I didn't like about this lens. Unfortunately, my family's been very sick the last several days, so I didn't have a ton of time to make a super polished video. So, what we're going to be doing is a pros and cons list. I'm going to give you the reasons I absolutely love this lens and the reasons you may not want to pick them up, and I will also be comparing it in some ways to to the Sure 50mm T29. And neither of these companies have sponsored this video. They both have sent me gear in the past to review, so getting that disclosure out of the way. But this video is supported by those of you who have purchased my camera guides and LUTs. Check the link in the description to learn more, and thank you guys so much for the support. So before we get to the pros and cons of this super interesting new anamorphic lens, let's take a look at the body and kind of do an overview. So here I have the lens. It comes with a metal friction mount lens cap, which is actually really nice. So I appreciate that. And then on the back, we have a Canon EF mount, and this is the EF version. We'll talk about mounts in a second, and we'll talk about what this thing is sticking off the back of the lens. Next, we'll take a look at the body itself, and I'll bring in the Sure 50 millimeter so you can kind of see what the two look like side by side. Now let's take a closer look at the body of the lens. We have our focus ring on the back. You see we have a nice little cutout on this side, which is the smart side on the dumb side of the lens. Same thing, different style cutout to be able to see our focus focus markings. And then we have our T-stops or our aperture or iris ring. We've got 22 all the way to T29. Same on the other side. On the bottom of the lens, we have a removable quarter 20. I'll actually bring in a Canon R5C so that you can see what this thing looks like when it's mounted up to a camera body. So that's pretty amazing for a 1.8 times anamorphic lens, super manageable. Honestly, it just kind of feels like, you know, a really small 70 to 200 on this guy. So now let's get to the pros and cons of what I love about this thing, starting with the squeeze factor on this lens. We're looking at a 1.8 times squeeze factor, which is fantastic. That's pretty darn close to a 2X anamorphic lens. And what that translates to is you're going to get a wider field of view and have more of that oval bokeh, just more anamorphicness, if you will. If you shoot on a camera that films in 16 by nine, this is the aspect ratio you'll be working with, but it's best if you scale that up a little bit to get closer to a traditional anamorphic aspect ratio. The next thing I love about this lens is huge, and that is the EF mount option. So you can get this lens in several different mounts. I'll put them all on screen for you now, but the one I would go for and the one I would recommend most is Canon EF. If you get this lens mount, you will be able to adapt this lens to so many different cameras. And in my opinion, it adds a ton of value. The Sure lenses, you have to go with some kind of mirrorless mount. Sony E, Canon RF, you know, L Alliance, one of those mounts. But the problem is if you switch camera systems or rent a different camera, this thing's pretty much useless. Whereas this guy in a Canon EF or PL is going to be incredibly versatile and you'll be able to adapt it to so many different cameras. Do keep in mind, because of this little nub here on the back of the lens, you most likely will not be able to use this with Canon DSLRs, so older cameras that have mirrors built in, or if you use adapters like speed boosters or any kind of adapter that has a glass element or filter inside, that may not work because this is protruding. But the nice thing is this will easily adapt to any kind of mirrorless camera like this Canon R5C over here or a Sony E-mount mirrorless or cinema camera. So that's the main thing I'm trying to get at here. Canon EF is awesome to be able to have on an anamorphic lens and to have it so small. The next thing I love about this lens is the flares. Now you can buy this with blue or amber flares. So first of all, I love that you have the option to choose, but that aside, the flares are really, really nice. So here's a quick look at the Great Joy flares on this lens. And if we compare that to the Sure anamorphic 50 millimeter, you can see there is a huge difference. Now I have been giving Sure a hard time about their flares for a while now. And this is definitely something that's more subjective, but in my opinion, their flares are A, way too strong and B, 
They're too saturated and they dominate the image. Not just when you see flares, but often if there's any kind of backlighting in your scene, you'll get kind of this blue turquoisey purple haze over your image and it just looks really, really bad in my opinion. The Great Joy, on the other hand, has really nice colors. They are less saturated. They're more of a teal, less of a really purpley blue. And there isn't this huge haze across your entire image, which I just really, really appreciate. So when it comes to flares, I much prefer the Great Joy flares over Suray. The next thing I love about this lens is the price. Now this thing is available right now on Indiegogo, 20% off at launch. And that equates to for the EF version, which I would recommend just under $1,300. The next thing I love about this lens is actually that there are more coming. There's going to also be a 35 millimeter and 85 millimeter. And if they're all T29 and 1X and have a Canon EF mount, that's gonna be a really hard set to pass up on. The last thing I absolutely love about this lens is the fact that you can close focus down to 27.5 inches. And that is actually really impressive for anamorphic lenses. This means you won't need to use diopters as much. So I really love seeing that on a lens like this. And if you need to use diopters, there are 82 millimeter front threads on the lens so you can easily add diopters or other filters. So those are the things I love about the lens. Now let's get to the stuff I don't like. And the first is going to be the markings. So the aperture ring or iris ring is fine, but on the focus ring, we only have meters. Whereas on the Suray set of lenses, you have, first of all, I think nicer markings. Secondly, we are looking at meters and feet. Another thing I don't like about the Great Joy is that it's not actually full frame. Don't get me wrong, it works on full frame and for its purpose, it'll get the job done. But if you take a full frame 16 by nine, de-squeeze to 1.8, you're going to have vignetting around the corners. Now, honestly, this isn't really that big of a deal because that de-squeeze on 16 by nine is super duper thin in a really strange aspect ratio. So most of us are going to scale that up to be a more usable aspect ratio, in which case you're not going to have issues with vignetting. Another thing it's kind of a pro and a con is going to be the maximum aperture of T29 on this lens. I wish it was a little faster. T2, T2.1, something like that would give us a little more shallow depth of field, a little more of that anamorphic bokeh magic. But on the flip side, I really appreciate that the lens is small as it is, because if we had a wider maximum aperture, this thing would be significantly larger. The next thing I don't like about this lens is the fact that the squeeze factor changes depending on the focus range. For example, if you take this lens, go all the way down to minimum focus or 0.7 meters, the squeeze factor changes from 1.8 to more like 1.6. So you have to change your de-squeeze in post-production and you're going to lose some of those yummy artifacts like having really tall bokeh and things like that. The next thing I don't care for on this lens is this giant rear, whatever you would call this, this little bump out on the back of the lens. And this is unfortunate because it's going to limit the amount of cameras you're going to be able to use. I haven't tested it, but I doubt you'll be able to put this on a DSLR with a mirror. And of course, like we talked about, certain adapters are just not going to work. And the other thing you have to pay attention to is the rear lens cap. This is not a traditional Canon rear lens cap. This is significantly longer. So if you buy this lens, do not lose this rear cap because it's super deep and just a completely different size. That wraps up my thoughts on this new lens from Great Joy. Overall, I'm excited to see more options and more competition in this space. I think this is a great lens. I really, really enjoyed shooting on it. And for under $1,300, I think you're gonna be really happy with this. Links to these lenses will be down in the description. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you guys have a wonderful rest of your day and we'll see you in the next video.